Hi, and welcome to part two of this light bright series on creative lighting design. In this part, titled Accents, we will look at different accent factors and how this is important in lighting design. This will be presented to you by Mike Simpson, Global Application Lead at Philips Lighting. So we also have to think about the things that we're lighting and how they fit relative to their, their background. Because ultimately, everything we see will have some sort of background to it. And it's a relationship between the object and the background that is also helping to create our, our shape and form uh, in our lighting design. We use a thing called the accent, an accent factor, which is the ratio between the light on the object and the light in the background. And it's always surprising when you say to people, you know, if you put twice the amount of light that you've got in the background on that object, you're only just going to notice it. Uh, you'll hardly detect that there's any light on there at all. Uh, it might not be in shadow, but it's not really going to stand out. For something to start to be noticeable, you've really got to start to put something like five times the, the background light level onto it. And if you want it to create a really dramatic theatrical effect, then you're up to the 15, 30 and 50 to 1 ratios between object and background. In fact, for very dramatic effects, we have to lower the background level. Otherwise, it becomes really difficult to put that amount of light onto the object to create the, the effects. So dramatic and very dramatic, we see backgrounds being lowered down. So if we look at our ballet dancer here, you can see a good example of a dramatic effect where the ballet dancer is lit and she's set against a much darker background. So we see the object in terms of modeling, but also in terms of the, the background. So we can have a look at some practical applications of that by looking at our, our Roman bust with different amounts of light on. So first of all, for a noticeable effect, we have an accent factor of two to one. So twice the level of light on the, the bust as we have on the background. In the example of these mannequins in a, in a shop, you can see that they are lit, but really they don't stand out. You have some impression as to what the rest of the, the shop is uh, like from the, the background to the picture. They're not really standing out, but they are lit. So this is a, a noticeable effect, but, but that would be all. If we increase the level of light on our uh, bust, you can begin to see the beam of light and the shadow appearing on the background. So now we're talking about accent factors of five to one, five times the level of light on the bust as we have on our, our background. So have a look at the supermarket. You can see where the fruit and vegetables are now illuminated. If you look at the floor, you can see there's definitely light that's directed onto those uh, uh, prod that the, the produce there compared to other areas of the, the store but probably from quite a high mounting height. So when you start to, to look to get these higher accent factors and to get the intensity of light that you need to create these uh, effects, the higher you are away, the, the harder it's going to be to uh, achieve that. Which is why you often see in, uh, in supermarkets where they've got light, localized lighting on the, uh, the produce, they'll be lowered down from the ceiling, which helps them get the illumination that they need to give them these sorts of accent factors. Then we start to move into the theatrical, uh, so accent factors of 15 to 1. So if you look at this display of bags, you can see that not only is there light directed from the ceiling, there's also concealed lighting under the shelves that is putting light onto the, the merchandise itself. And again, you have an impression from the, the, the ceiling that we see there, that probably this display is considerably brighter and with a higher light level than the rest of the store, giving us this higher, more theatrical appearance. Now we begin to move into the, the, the dramatic, where we've kept our light on the bust itself, but we've now had to take the background lighting level down to give us this much higher accent factor, 30 to 1. 
So this is a sort of thing that we might use in a, a shop window where we're seeing the window against a backdrop of probably a darker street at night and the mannequins showing the uh, the merchandise are seen against a darker background within the, the window itself. What the eye will always do is to tend to look for some point of brightness. If it's got a very plain, bland, uniform scene, the eye will, will wander, it will dart about looking for for something that catches its attention to rest on. So having something that is highlighted, something with a high accent factor that stands out in the field of view, will naturally attract the eye, which of course is what the shopkeeper here is trying to do. He's trying to attract your attention towards the merchandise that he's trying to sell. And then we finally move on to a very dramatic accent factor. So 50 to 1. This is almost no background light and just light on the object itself. And we do see shops where this technique is employed. You create a very dark interior and the merchandise is, is there highlighted by the, the spotlight to draw you and attract you uh, and cause real interest. You know, you really want to go and explore and find out what it is that, that is there in the light compared to the dark spaces where, where you are. And these techniques will typically be used in the high end of, of fashion in, and retailing. So here again we have shop windows with a very high accent factor, a very theatrical accent factor, dark backgrounds with the individual elements of merchandise and the display highlighted to, to draw your attention. And you see how when you take a step back, uh, the objects that are lit in the window stand out against the, the darker street that you're walking past. Now, though those examples are all from interior and from retail, which is very typically where we, we tend to think of uh, trying to use accent and lighting to create form and shape, the same principles apply in exterior lighting. Uh, in this uh, example here, this is the, the old warehouse area in uh, the city of Hamburg, where there is no other lighting apart from the highlighting on the buildings, the spotlighting on the buildings. So the fact that there isn't a lot of other ambient light around makes this a very theatrical effect. We have light and we have shade. There's not a lot of ambient light to, to wash out the highlighting that you see there. So exactly the same principles apply. And if we look at some of the, the lighting guidance that we get, then quite logically you're in a city centre where the ambient light is going to be higher. We're going to be ap applying higher light levels uh, to create our effects. When we're in the urban fringes, the outside outskirts of our town, we apply lower lighting levels because we don't need so much light to create the same effects. So all of these principles apply whether we're talking about in interior lighting or exterior architectural lighting. So I think there's one message um, that, uh, that we can learn from this, and that is when we're trying to light something to create an effect, a little bit of light can go a long way. So given the right conditions, given the right amount of darkness, we can create these shadows, we can create the, the drama, if that's what we're looking for, or we can have softer, more subtle effects. Nothing is right and nothing is wrong. These are all tools that are in the palette of the designer.